Hello, and welcome to another Kids Connect video, where you can learn all about the amazing world around you, with fun and educational facts and worksheets. In today's episode, we're going to learn about a remarkable process that takes place at the heart of every plant to sustain life on Earth. Can you guess what it is? It's photosynthesis. Here's a riddle to think about while you watch. In gardens green, I stand tall and bright, facing the sun from morning's first light. From east to west, I track the day's course. My golden face follows its powerful force. Watch until the end for the answer. Let's start with the etymology of the word photosynthesis. It's a big word, but it's easy to understand by going back to its roots. Photosynthesis originates from two Greek words. Photo, which means light. And synthesis, which means putting together. So, photosynthesis is a process of using light to make food for the plant to survive. Photosynthesis is an intricate process that takes place in a part of plant cells, called chloroplasts. These use light, water, and carbon dioxide to make food for the plant to grow. This process is divided into two parts. There are light-dependent reactions and light-independent reactions. The light-independent reactions are also called the Calvin cycle. Let's break down these phases and reactions. We'll start with the light-dependent reactions. These take place in the thylakoid membranes of chloroplasts. Chloroplasts contain color pigments, like chlorophyll, which is green, to absorb sunlight. This process excites electrons, and triggers a series of reactions. Some of these reactions create adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, and nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, or NADPH. These are energy-rich molecules. Now we move on to the next phase. Like the name suggests, light-independent reactions take place, whether there is light or not. Plants take in carbon dioxide through tiny openings in their leaves, called sto, mata. CO2 then diffuses into the stroma of the chloroplast. This is where the plant makes sugars. For science lovers, the chloroplasts use ATP and NADPH, created in the light-dependent phase, to do some chemistry. Carbon and oxygen in CO2, is combined with more carbon molecules, to create glucose and other sugars. Plants, and the glucose they synthesize, are the starting point of most food chains. They are called primary producers, and are responsible for supplying energy and nutrients to herbivores, which feed omnivores, and carnivores, and so on. So as you can see, photosynthesis is the foundation of entire ecosystems. Plants are the givers of life on Earth. A byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen, which is essential for most forms of life on the planet. Without oxygen, animals would not be able to complete their survival process, called respiration you'll no doubt have made the connection between plants, CO2, and climate change. Through photosynthesis, plants absorb carbon dioxide, helping regulate the levels of this greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, and mitigating its impact on global climate. But it's a catch-22 situation. Photosynthesis is vital for removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, but global climate change is impacting the environments in which plants grow. For example, there are more floods, droughts, wildfires, and storms, all of which impact plants and, therefore, photosynthesis. With plants under stress or removed from ecosystems, imbalances can occur, and photosynthesis is not able to take place. This impacts the whole food chain of that ecosystem, as well as CO2 levels in the atmosphere. Luckily, today we're living in an age of science and technology, and scientists are working hard to crack the code of photosynthesis. This has two main benefits. The first is to enhance photosynthesis in plants for larger crops, and addressing global food security. The second is to develop artificial photosynthetic systems, to create clean energy, remove CO2 from the atmosphere, and produce valuable chemicals. And now for the answer you've been waiting for. It's a sunflower. Sunflowers are the most well-known heliotropic plants. Heliotropism, means they can track the sun's movement across the sky, optimizing their exposure to sunlight and enhancing their photosynthesis efficiency. Sunflower buds and flowers face eastward in the morning, and follow the sun as it moves across the sky, gradually turning westward by evening. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this lesson, visit Kids Connect for fun worksheets on many more interesting science topics. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to be the first to know about new content. See you in the next video.